In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create these pretty cool quote graphics inside Adobe After Effects. Now, if you're a patron on my Patreon page, I did put together this month a graphics pack with a bunch of different quote animations that you can use directly inside Premiere Pro. Feel free to go grab that. And if you're not a patron, considering supporting the channel by joining in the link down in the video description. You can not only get access to this pack, but several of the templates and assets that I use on a daily basis as a video editor. So be sure to check that out, but let's see how to create this graphic inside Adobe After Effects. So to get started, I have this quote icon. If you wanna follow along, I will leave this linked in the video description. I just found this simple quote icon from the internet. So to get started with After Effects open, I'm just gonna click and drag this into our project panel here to import the quote mark inside our Adobe After Effects project. And next, I'm gonna go up to composition, new composition. I'm then gonna name this quote animation. From the preset, you can choose whichever one you'd like. I'm gonna choose 1920 by 1080. You can choose whichever frame rate and duration you wish. I'm gonna leave it at 10 seconds for the duration. That's what I found to be the best duration for these. Then I'm gonna click OK. Next, what I'm gonna do is add in our background gradient. So I'm gonna go into layer, new solid. Then you can click on color and you can choose the color for your gradient. I recommend choosing an opposite color of what the text is gonna be. So if your text is gonna be white, I would recommend a darker color for this. So I'm gonna choose dark blue uh, for now because my text is gonna be white. And then I'm gonna click OK, and then click OK. This will create a new solid here. We can zoom out, so I'm just gonna click on this drop down and zoom out a little bit. Now the next thing we have to do is make a mask and then feather it to get that nice smooth gradient look for our graphics. So I'm gonna go up to the rectangle tool from our tools panel, click on it, and then click and draw out a nice rectangle mask here. You should see something like this. Then what you can do is down in the timeline, you can twirl down under mask one and then search for mask feather. Once you have that selected, you can crank this value up and you can really make this any value you wish. And it really depends on your composition resolution settings. So just get it out to a certain area that you'd like it to be at. Now, let's say if you want to adjust the position of the mask, what you can do is click off and then click back on the mask here and then just simply select your selection tool from the top menu and then click and drag your mask down. So if you wanted it lower in the frame, you can you know choose to have it lower in the frame like that. If you want it higher in the frame, you can choose it to be higher. If you want to select the individual points to select an individual vertex, what you can do is click on the layer itself, not the mask one, but on the actual layer, and then you can click and drag the individual vertexes. But that's how you can adjust the mask if you wish. For now, I'm just gonna select mask one and then just get this down in position near the bottom center of the screen here. Now that I have that in place, the next step is to add in our quotation marks. So for this, I'm gonna turn on title action safe if you not already have this turned on. You can select it by clicking on this button here and go to title action safe. This will display the safety margins and we wanna make sure that our graphics and text are within the second inner rectangle here. So next, I'm gonna click and drag in our icon for our quote. So next I'm going to click on the layer and click S to bring up scale inside my timeline and then just scale this down quite a bit. This is really up to preference so I'm going to scale it down to whatever looks nice in my project. Then I'm just going to click and drag and position it in the bottom left. You can grab your zoom tool by clicking on Z and then just marquee select around in this bottom corner. Then I'm going to go back to my selection tool and just fine tune the area in which I want the quote marker to be. Once I have it set, I'm gonna go back to my zoom feature and go to fit. And next, I'm gonna duplicate this quote marker and put it on the other side. So to do that, just select your quote marker icon, hit Command D to duplicate it, and then click R for rotation, and change the rotation value to 180 degrees. This will turn it upside down, essentially. And then you can click P for position, if you don't see these separated, what you can do is right click on position and go to separate dimensions. This will display the X and Y positions separately from each other, or if you prefer them together, you can always have them together. But I recommend separating them because later in this tutorial, when we go to animate them, we're gonna need to adjust the X and Y separately from each other. So be sure to separate them and then click and drag the X value to the right and then just align it to the right side here. So you should have something that looks like this. Now let's say if you wanted to colorize these two graphics, there's a few different ways that you can change the color of them. You can add the fill effect to both of these. So let's say if you select one of them, you can go over to the effects and presets and you can type in fill. So if you type in fill, 
Under Generate, you can click and drag the fill effect to one of these icons. Then you can change the color to your liking. Let's say if you wanted to do like a blue, or maybe let's say if you wanted to do a lighter shade of this type of blue, you can do something like that. And then you can simply click on this layer, go up to Effects Controls in the top left, hit Command C, and then select the other layer and hit Command V. This will paste that effect to the other graphic. And that's a way that you can change the color of the graphic. I also wanted to point out that you don't necessarily have to use the fill effect to change the color of a graphic. You can always adjust the color or add an overlay color by adding a layer style. So you can always right click on any layer inside your timeline panel, go to layer styles and go to color overlay. And this will override any of the effects. And that's another way, let's say if we scroll down here, you can add and change a color. So those are two ways that you can adjust the color of a graphic or a layer inside Adobe After Effects. This looks pretty cool, but for now, I actually wanted white, so I'm gonna remove these. But I just wanted to show you if you wanted to change the way the color was for these graphics here. All right, so now that we have our quote markers in here, we're gonna add the text. So I'm gonna grab my type tool, and then we can just click out anywhere really, and then just type in the text that you wish to have. Once you have it all typed out, what I'm gonna do is grab my selection tool, and we're gonna make some adjustments to the text. In the paragraph panel to the right, I'm gonna center align this. If you don't see any of these panels, you can always go up to window and search for the panel you're looking for. In this case, it's gonna be right here, a paragraph, and that'll pop up the paragraph panel. Now we need access to the character panel, so I'm gonna go up to window character. This will bring up the character panel, and we can scale it down here a little bit when it comes to the size. And now we need the align panel. We wanna align this text layer to the center, so I'm gonna go up to window align. This will bring up the align panel right here. Make sure that it set to composition and then just click align horizontally. So next what we have to do is center align the text layer to these quotation marks as well. So they're all centered to each other. And what you can do is with the text layer selected, hold down shift and select the other layers here. This will select all of them inside our timeline. And now when we go back up to the align panel, we can change it from composition to selection if it not already changed it for you. And then we can select this option here, align vertically. And this will align all the layers together vertically. So now you can see that they're all perfectly aligned to each other. And now with them all selected, we can now click and drag them down and reposition them accordingly here. So they should all be good here. All right, so now that we have them all in place, now we can start animating them. The first thing I'm gonna animate is the background since that's the easiest one. I'm gonna click on the background layer. I'm gonna bring up T for opacity. Then I'm gonna to toggle the animation by clicking on the stopwatch, change the value to zero, and then go out to one second. Then I'm gonna change the value back up to 100. And when we click and play this back, we can see that we've faded it in. Next, we're gonna fade in and also keyframe the position of our quote markers. So to do that, we're gonna go around maybe 10 frames or so, so right around here. And what we're gonna do is select one of our quote markers. So I'm gonna click on this one here, click P to bring up position. And once again, that's why I recommended separating the dimensions. If they're not already separated, right click and go to separate dimensions. You should see the X and Y separate here. So what we're gonna do is toggle the keyframe next to Y position, because we wanna change the value of the Y. So with that selected, go out forward in time, maybe one second or so, to around one second and 10 frames. Then we're gonna add a keyframe by clicking on this diamond right here, and then click the left arrow to go back to the first keyframe, and then we're gonna go up a little bit. I recommend going up right above the text there, right around there is good. And now what we're gonna add is some easy ease to this last keyframe here. We're gonna right click on this diamond and go to keyframe assistance, easy ease in. This will just make the animation more smooth as it animates in. So if we click and play this back, this is what we have so far, it just kind of drops in. Now the last thing we need to add to this is to fade it in. So what I'm gonna do is go to the first keyframe here and then click T to bring up opacity, click on the stopwatch and then go back out to one second and 10 frames, make another keyframe here Go back to the original by clicking on the left arrow and change the value to zero. Now when we click and play this back, you can see that it fades in and positions in here. Now you can also adjust the easing of the animation as well. Let's say if you wanted to make the position more smooth, you can click on P once again. Go back to this keyframe here. When we click on it, we can switch over to the graph editor. So if you click on this button, you should see this little yellow marker with a handlebar. You can hold down shift and click and drag 
the yellow handlebar to the left, and this will add more curve to the ease. So if we click and play this back, you can see it's a lot more smooth. Kind of comes into a stop uh, more steady. So you can mess around and play with the easing here to kind of get it to the way that you'd like it. Once you have that one animated, the next step is to do the same for the other one. So what I recommend to save some time is if we click on the graph editor button, we can go back to the first keyframe here. We can click on this layer and click U to display all keyframes. We can then mark key select these keyframes here and then hit command C to copy them. We can then click on the other quote graphic and then hit command V to paste the animation. So right now it's the same animation, but let's say if you wanted it to come up from the bottom instead of the top, what you can easily do is click on the layer, go to the first keyframe here, and then just change it to be coming from the bottom. So now when we click and click play, you can see that we have kind of some opposition happening when it comes to our animation. So that's how you can animate the quote mark icons. And next, let's animate the text. So to animate the text, I recommend just adding an animator to it. So let's click on the layer, let's scroll down, and you should see this animate button right here. You can click on it and click on opacity. I will also point out that you can animate any of the different properties here, but we're just choosing opacity for now. So if you see under animator one, we can scroll down under range selector. So if we scroll down, what we can first do is change the opacity to zero. This will make it disappear. Now what we can do is change the opacity selector over time to animate it on. So just to show you here, if we click and drag the start, from 0% to 100%, you can see that we're animating it on. So this is just a nice simple animation. So what we can do is go out to maybe around 20 frames or so, and then add a keyframe next to start. So I'm just gonna click toggle on the keyframe here, and then go out to maybe one second and 20 frames. And then we can change this value up to 100%. And same thing, we can maybe add some easy ease. So we can right click on this keyframe, go to keyframe assistant, easy ease in, and same with the other keyframe here, we can right click on it, go to keyframe assistant and easy ease out. This eases out of this keyframe and it eases into this keyframe. So when we click and play this back, we have something that looks like this. All right, so now that we animated it on, now we need to animate it off. And I wanted to show you a pretty cool trick that you can use to do this. Let's say if you wanted to animate it out the same way that it animated in, you can easily do that by time reversing the keyframes. So let's say if we go out to eight seconds or so, what we can do here is simply mark key select the keyframes next to the start range selector property, hit command C and hit command V to paste it. Now with these keyframes still selected, what you can do is right click, go to keyframe assistant and time reverse keyframe. And then when we click and play the spec, you can see that it just reverses the animation. You can do the same with the other ones as well. So let's say if we go back out here, let's mark key select these keyframes here hit command C, hit command V, right click on them, go to keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes. And then when we click and play this back, you can see that it just animates off the same way it animated in. We'll do the same with the other ones here. So just right click, go to the same option again. Same thing with the background gradient. We're just gonna hit command C, command V, right click, and just time reverse the keyframes. So when we click and play this back, you can see they all animate out together the same way that they animated in. So that's how you can create this pretty cool graphic inside Adobe After Effects. And like I mentioned, if you want to see the entire pack, be sure to join my Patreon using the link down in the video description. But that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.